Christmas. It's a time to rejoice and celebrate. And it's a time to sing the songs of Christmas again. We're honored that you're here to celebrate with us. Every day of the year, we are thankful that Jesus came. But at Christmas especially, the whole world stops to celebrate the birth of this little baby. This very special baby. You see, many babies have become king, but no other king ever became a baby. This baby, this King Jesus, changed the whole world and gave us a reason to celebrate. When you think of Christmas, so many images come to mind. Lights decorating Main Street, Christmas trees, and the windows of every home. You know all those great Christmas songs. Going caroling door to door, families gathering together. Christmas is all these and so much more. Remember, in this very busy season of the year, the Jesus is the reason for the season.
darkness covers while you rest in and hides the hope hearts are hurting for in the night a light is shining heaven's hope of love is dawning and angels sing joy to the world The time has come once again. Peace on earth, good will to all men. It's 
Christmas celebrations begin at the manger with Him. We say Merry Christmas because He is our joy. We say goodwill toward men because He is our peace and pardon. We say good tidings of great joy because He is our announcement and proclamation. We say good cheer because He is our hope and confidence. We say glory to God because His light blesses us. And we see Emmanuel because he is with us.
The people of Israel had waited many years for the coming of the Messiah. One day, an angel named Gabriel spoke to Zechariah as he was carrying out his priestly duties in the temple. Now, Zechariah was very old, and his wife Elizabeth had never been able to bear children. The angel told him he was going to have a son, and that they were to name him John. Now, John will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and many will turn to the Lord because of him. 
he will go forth and proclaim to the people to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. But because Zechariah doubted what the angel said, the angel made him unable to speak until their son John was born. What do you mean you're unable to speak? Zechariah, put that down. Talk to me. You go to the temple to burn incense and you come back unable to speak? Because you doubted. What does that mean? You doubted what an angel told you. Right, an, an angel? Okay, um, it's, all right, an angel. Um, are, you, are you feeling all right, honey? Um, maybe, you sure? Maybe, maybe you need to sit down, come on. What, maybe I need to sit down? I really don't have time for this. Okay. This isn't funny, Zachariah. Whatever game you're playing, I want this to stop. <sighs> An angel told you this? An angel of the Lord told you this? The angel told me that you, my love, will bear a son. joy and gladness that many will celebrate at his birth. God came to a childless couple. His age, her barrenness, the situation had seemed hopeless for so long. But sometimes life's most barren moments give birth to hallelujahs. The one who spoke light into darkness was taking away despair and replacing it with hope. 
God was fulfilling his promise to Israel and to the whole world. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now Mary was troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel went to her and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, said Mary, since I'm a virgin? The angel told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, she answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Um, sweetie, are you listening? Mary, I've told you once, I'll say it again. I can, I do, can two... do two things at once. I know, it's just that we need to talk. And Joseph, Yeah. I need you to listen. Mary, I'm listening so hard right now. You have no idea how much I'm concentrating on you and the words. I'm overwhelmed by your concentration, but can you just stop for a second? Mary, I'd love to stop, but I just can't. Why not? Mary, we're gonna be married soon, and I want everything to be perfect. Oh, I love your heart, Joseph, I do, but sometimes things aren't perfect. And that's okay, I mean, who knows what life might throw at us, right? Still, I want a house that's worthy of you, so I've gotta work because, because a man Because a man has, has got to have a plan. Have I said that before? A time or two. Mary, I have so many plans for us. I mean, look at this table. This is where we're gonna have all of our meals together. And I made it big enough for some little ones. Down the road, of course. About that. Now, where did I put that chisel? Uh, Joseph, I need to tell you something. Something unbelievable. Did you see it over there? I, just I was approached by an angel. And he said that I was highly favored. And at first, it felt like a dream yeah. until he told me something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the instant that he said it, I knew it to be true. Wow. That's great, hon. That's great. Joseph, are you listening to me? It was in my pocket the whole time. Joseph! What? I'm pregnant. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be registered, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his espoused wife, who was great with child. Mary, full of innocence, carrying the Holy Prince, you're almost there. You're almost there, Mother of the Living Word, trusting in the voice you heard. You're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost where the angels sing redemption's plan. Do your part. 
When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, they searched and searched the town for lodging. They begged innkeeper after innkeeper, but they couldn't find a place to stay. The town was filled with other travelers who were also there to register. But thou Bethlehem, which are to be little amongst the thousands of Judah, out of thee shall one come forth. Excuse me. We're all booked, no room, so sorry. Please, sir, we don't need much. <laughs> what did you think I meant by all booked? We have no room. <laughs> Please, sir, we've been walking for days. <laughs> what, do you think you're the only person who's been walking for days? <laughs> no, it, it's just- What, do you think you're the first person to come to my place this late asking for a room? <laughs> Hit the road. Pl please, there must be a closet, anything. Look, you can keep asking, but the answer is still. Honey, what are you doing? You shouldn't be on your feet. Please, I'll take care of this. Uh, are you, uh... Pregnant? <laughs> yes, very much. When do you expect the baby? Any day now. Look. We won't be any trouble, and I'll pay you whatever price. I'm sorry. We have no room. I'm sorry. It's okay. God will provide. Hey. Hey, wait, just, just give me a minute. Let me see what I can do. Come, come. So the innkeeper found room for them, not in the inn, but out with the animals in a small cattle stall, homeless, tired, frightened. Hovered in the corner was a young woman in labor and a weary husband who was searching to find answers about this miraculous birth. The innkeeper found a room for them, he found room for Jesus. A 
And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them at the inn. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Now Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the time of King Herod. When the wise men came, they asked, Where is one who was born King of the Jews? When Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. Are they here? As your advisor, I'm compelled to communicate my hesitancy, uh, hesitancy about this meeting. Do we even know these men? We do not. Well, then why should we have a meeting with them? They're stargazers. They're, they're Gentiles. The only thing more frustrating than having to explain myself is having to explain myself to someone whose job it is to do what I say. As if I, King Herod, didn't have a precisely specific reason for wanting to meet with these wandering stargazers. These men have valuable information. If we play our cards right, they can help us infinitely more than we can help ourselves. Now, unless you require any further explanation, send them in. Gentlemen, greetings, welcome. Welcome. My staff tells me that you've come quite a long way. This is true. We have come from the east. Well, is that right? Well, I trust your journeys haven't been too difficult. Mm, they are most like other journeys. Uh, some good, some bad, but uh, mostly long. <laughs> yes. So tell me, as a man who doesn't do very much journeying myself anymore, what is it precisely that inspired men such as yourselves to take on such a long trip? Well, as you know, word has been spreading about the birth of a messiah. We have witnessed his star and have come to worship him. I'd heard the rumors, but with this one, the stakes are too high to be imprecise with our actions. Becoming a king? That takes an effort unto itself, but maintaining the station, that requires an entirely different set of skills. Is that right? A new messiah? I hate to admit it, I feel a little silly. This is the first I'm hearing of this. He is said to be in a place called Bethlehem. Do you know where we could find this place? Perfect. So we have a person, and now we have the place. The only thing that's left is putting to good use that ancient adage, either hunt or watch yourself become the hunted. <laughs> Gentlemen, fortunate for you, Bethlehem is only 10 miles away. 10 miles? Well, uh, that's such a relief. Why, after so many miles, 10 is right around the corner. Yes, just around the corner indeed. <laughs> so, I'm sure you gentlemen are quite anxious to continue with your journey and see this Messiah firsthand. But before you go, may I ask a favor? Of course. When you find this king, would you come back to me and tell me exactly where he is so that I too might have an opportunity to go and worship him myself? Consider it done, King Herod. Gentlemen. I know he's just a baby boy, but all baby boys grow up to be men. And we just can't have that now, can we? <laughs> Prophets spoke of a royal birth. Jesus is his name. A holy child that will rule the earth. Jesus is his name. 
Does he think he will wear the crown? Does he think the people will all bow down? In my kingdom, one king is found. A star will lead them to find their king. <laughs> their gifts of worship and praise to bring. Foolish men, won't they ever see? I am Herod, king born of royalty. Who's more worthy to reign than me? Why does this tiny baby threaten me this way? Is there a chance that this little child could wear my crown someday? A king is born of nobility, accepting his royal destiny. Not for a common man Does he think the people will understand? Is this part of a master plan? I'll send my soldiers to end this threat With an act of vengeance they won't forget What the prophet said, there's a heavy price weighing on his head. I won't stop till I know he's dead. I want to know. I need to know. Someday I'll know. So the wise men left Herod to seek the baby, and the star went before them until it stood before the place where the child lay. And upon coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. The wise men knew about Herod's plan to kill Jesus because God had warned them in a dream. So when they left the child, they returned to their homes by a different route.
As evening shadows fell, he made his entrance into this world. His mother, who was scarcely more than a girl, wrapped him in rags and laid him in a cattle stall. His little feet awkwardly stumbled as he took his first steps. His boyish play filled his home with the sounds of laughter. His years of adolescence were spent in a carpenter shop learning to work with his hands. As a young man of 30, he filled his days with the needs of the common and the outcast of society, sharing with them the wonder of God's kingdom. His humility and tenderness were the very antithesis of the proud rulers of the day, which commanded regal processions wherever they went. His miracles and compassion sparked the hatred of those who did not understand him. In a mockery of a trial, he was condemned to the crucifixion of a criminal. It would seem that death had made his mission futile, but nothing could stop his message. Not centuries of turmoil or violence, not political or social disasters, not even death or the grave itself. The mercy and grace he freely gives and still offers today has changed the lives of countless millions throughout the ages. You see, we stand as trophies of his matchless grace. You see, he was more than just a frail baby born into poverty and loneliness. He was, he is, he forever will be the one and only hope for the world. Peace for the distressed, love for the broken, joy for the mourner. The promise of God. You see, he is Jesus, our Emmanuel. Joy to the world, the Lord is come.
here we are at Christmas again, hoping to hear the angels sing, needing a star to follow, really wanting to kneel at the manger. We mean to adore him as Mary, and we do believe as Joseph. We ought to worship with the shepherds, and our hearts are longing to rejoice with the wise men. But somehow there just isn't any time. But it just happens to be that the angels come again and again, singing the life-giving words, our Savior has come.
Well, is it Christmas yet? Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for coming. Please drive safely as you leave tonight. God bless you.